Hi guys, it's Jamie here. For today's stash builder, we're going to do it in two parts. Not because it's overly complicated or it's anything a beginner couldn't do. It's just that the first process in creating the clusters is reasonably long winded. And I thought I'd give you an opportunity to get your clusters together before we go on to use them as some ephemera for our stash building. Of course, you can just make the clusters as the stash building and keep them to one side until you want to use them in a journal. We are going to be using packaging. So I've used a lot of Amazon packaging and to show you, we've got some that I've just kind of scrunched up and left plain, thrown in bits of coffee, use some ink to stain it up when using it. We have this packaging that arrived that's got these lovely sort of raised stripes. I've used some ink pads with that to stain it up. Two versions of using Amazon general packaging. The first one is lots and lots of stamp work, mainly from Timu, AliExpress, Amazon and eBay, distress inks of different shades and hues. And then for those of you that don't or have those, so you don't feel like you have to rush out and buy them, I've also done one using just some basic acrylic paints and mark making. I did actually end up using one script stamp that I actually painted with black acrylic rather than black ink so that there are alternatives. Other things that I had in my stash that I have used um, was I'd already got some coffee stain doilies. I've used a little bit of that. And then just to show you that nothing goes to waste, when I was painting and staining and dyeing on this kitchen paper, I then, once it was dry, also used that as part of the stash builder. I did use some black and white photos from secondhand books for the focal points or the main central features of the Tim Holtz style clusters that we're doing. However, you may not have a book with those kind of portraits in it. So I have produced two copyright free printables for you and the link is in the video description to get to the video description where you start to see video description is you get a couple of sentences on YouTube. There's a little sort of down arrow, a V shape. If you click on that, it drops the whole description down so you can see it. So on that video description, you will have a link to where those free printables are stored and also instructions on how to download those. You will find a link to the shop Junk Journal Cafe, and also, of course, because why not, my tip jar, because these tutorials are advert free and anything that goes into my tip jar is put towards materials. For example, my printer broke two days ago. I've had to replace it and that cost me £368, which is about 500 US dollars. Therefore, any help a shop purchase, a tip, anything like that, does keep this area going with supplies and materials. Obviously, I do understand for all of us, times are hard. The economy is not in a great place. Another way you can help the channel, which is free, is to like, to share, to comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, we will now go to the overhead of the main video and the tutorial. There may be a slight volume change because my phone needs replacing and the microphone port of my phone no longer works, so I can't wear a clip-on microphone anymore. Therefore, I get an imbalance in the audio, so I do apologize for that, but can't afford to replace the phone. <laughs> so that's where we're at with that. I apologise. Just if you're wearing headphones, be aware there may be a volume change. Let's go to the pre-recorded bit. 
we have arrived at the main tutorial. So here I am with some Amazon packaging, which you can see is quite creased up. I have my Distress Oxide, I've got the Rusty Hinge, the Espresso and the Vintage Photo. I'm turning it the wrong way around. I no longer have my overhead camera because I have moved from one studio to a bigger room and I've yet to have an overhead camera fixed. So it's kind of at a weird angle off to the side at the moment. And I forgot that I have to spin on editing my pictures round so I'm showing it to the camera and of course that's no longer going to be the right way round post editing. Just a quick explanation as to what on earth I was doing there. My first move to grunging this packaging paper up is to go over these creases with a soft brush and different distress inks. Hopefully this will help bring the creasing out and age up the paper. I feel the effect is a little subtle for me, so I'm spraying the paper now with some water and bringing in some Distress Ink Sprays. You activate the spray by shaking the bottle side to side quite gently. You do not want to shake it up and down because that could block the spray nozzle. Here's the second one, slightly stronger. This is the Walnut Stain. The previous one was the Antique Linen. You can really see that one going onto this paper now. Because I am also working on the Steampunk Journal with the Steampunk Creators Club, I thought I would do large pieces of background paper, not only to make the clusters, but also so that I can make maybe a small individual album as a tutorial for that club, as well as the big Steampunk Journal tutorials. Therefore, on camera, you can see me fiddling around, getting the paper fully covered, turning it around, and continuing to spray. I did manage to get some spray on my work table. The sprays I actually managed to get off my work table but the paint that I do next I did not get off quite so successfully. I would recommend you cover your work surfaces far better than I do. Once the paper is dry as you can see I did actually add some teal and some lighter stone colours to it as well. I am now going to stamp it with various different styles of ink stamp, steampunky type designs, script, and I'm going to cover it completely. I am helped in doing this because I have bought a huge range of label stamps, script stamps, steampunky style clocks, keys, mechanicals, anything like that, even some grungy stencils from cheaper sources like AliExpress, Timu, but also eBay and Amazon. And I've built that collection up over the last 18 months. However, the next piece of paper we do, I'm going to be showing you how to do it with some basic acrylic paints. If you don't have acrylic paints, the way I select mine is I go onto Amazon and I get a small set that is four stars and above and I'm not looking for brands at that point because it's for junk journaling. I think I can get away with the cheaper ones. Once I got my paper pretty covered with the black ink stamps, I started to use some different colour inks. This one is a red, and that means that they will pop against that black background. I'm really happy with how this one's looking, so I'm just lifting it up so you can see some close-up detail on the paper. With the embossed packaging paper that I'd kept to one side for this activity, I am going over it with the ink pad direct onto the paper for speed. I used a mixture of permanent ink stamps and distress ink on this paper. Therefore, I'm going to give it a spray down with water and see if I can get some of the distress ink to move about and stain inside of those embossed pieces. While the paper's still damp, I'm bringing in just a couple of sprays of the teal and the vintage photo. I also decide not only to spray the vintage photo, but to remove the nozzle and use it as a dropper so that I can actually flick some vintage photo in spots over the paper as well because this will give a different effect to the background paper that we've just done. In this part of the video, we're going to do another background paper 
this time using acrylic paint as an alternative to all the distress inks and ink stamps on the first background that we did. Again, because I am going for the Tim Holtz style grunge, I have a selection of browns and dark greens, a water spray and a great big brush. And this is where you just play until you get a result that you like. Because I've decided this is a little bit too strong for my taste, I'm bringing in a bit more water and then I'm going to attempt to lift the paint off using some very strong, I've actually got some industrial strength roll. Kitchen paper roll will work just as well. It's simply because a friend gave me this huge industrial paper roll that can be used over and over again. It's so strong you can actually wash your dishes using it. And here you can see that I've scrunched it up and I'm using the roll and the extra water to lift off some of that brown. And here's what I mean by play. This wasn't planned. I happen to have this industrial paper roll in my hand. So rather than add the green directly onto the background paper, I thought I'd give a try to adding it to this kitchen roll, adding some water and splodging it over to see what effect that makes. And by itself, it doesn't look much, but I'm not a less is more type of person. I'm a more is more. Therefore, I'm just going to add more and more colour until I get to an effect that I think is acceptable as the first stage of the painted paper. Now it's time to add some detail to this background paper using black acrylic paint and this script stamp. Then I decide to spray and see if I can get any splashes on there. My printer broke and you can use anything for mark making. I've got one of the blue cartridges out of the printer and I'm just going to see if by adding some water to that foam pad at the bottom of the ink cartridge, whether it will make a mark or not. This is not hugely successful, but everything was going in the bin, so it's worth giving it a go. In this section of the video, we're just going to look at some other types of mark making tools. Here I've got some cardboard box where I've stripped back the top layer to reveal the ridges. Some black acrylic paint. I'm painting that over and I'll be using this as an ink stamp. I love to add circles to grungy style papers. I'm simply using an alcohol measure dipped into black acrylic paint to randomly add lots and lots of circles. If they don't fully print down, it doesn't matter. That worn look, half circle, overlapping circles is all part of the design. Now I have a Prosecco cork and again the black acrylic paint just to make a different style of circle. I'll probably not use quite as many of these on the paper because they're quite solid, but they do add a different dimension to the use of circles. Here I'm just trying to give you a bit of a close-up look on this painted acrylic paper, and you can see that one of the browns I've used was a bronze metallic. It catches the light beautifully. For the next background experiment paper, I want some smaller pieces, I'm quickly tearing up another sheet of Amazon packaging. Do I obsessively buy from Amazon? Maybe. I'm scrunching them up because I've decided that I want to try soaking these in coffee. Actually, when I went to go out and get the coffee and make the black coffee, I discovered I hardly had any instant coffee left. So I made the mixture a little weak. It doesn't really make a strong difference to the result on this paper, which is a little unfortunate. If I'd been able to make a much stronger black coffee and allowed the papers to soak longer, I think we would have ended up with some far more interesting results. Therefore, I did try adding just sprinkles of the instant coffee straight onto the wet paper to get some splotching. I really did want this to be a stash buster, stash builder type video. Therefore, I decided I will actually add some ink stamps to another form of Amazon packaging. These are the big bags that you get. 
and cut out the ink stamping as potential layers, focal points, backgrounds for the clusters. I'm even using the stuff that Amazon's printed on their bag to extend it and use the barcodes and some of the wording and the letters i'll be cutting it all out as you can see here i've already roughly cut out quite a few things and being a bit lazy and not really wanting to get my cutting board out so i can cut nice straight lines i decide actually torn edges look great too and that's a way i can just have a scrappy look to all these little bits that I've stamped up or that Amazon have kindly given me on their packaging. For full transparency, when it comes to the clusters, I have gone into one of my scrap boxes and I'm sorting through bits and pieces of leftovers and adding those to the Amazon ink stamping and packaging that I've already got. As you can see, I am pulling out a lot of black and white photos which is why I decided to give you a couple of sheets of free printables of vintage photos in black and white in the Dropbox link, which you will find in the description. I did stay in my desk, as you know, doing all of this, but I did actually have some parchment paper or kitchen greaseproof paper underneath everything. I just didn't have enough. I'm now using that dried paper and tearing that up because I think this will make for an interesting layer in the clusters with it being a little bit see-through and having some of the colours that we've been using with the paints and the distress inks. Here's all the stuff ready to go. I've even got some doilies there that I coffee stained before. Our bits of stained papers, painted papers and ink papers. I've also got some torn pieces of cleared up cardboard box. By cleared up, I mean the majority of the paper has been ripped away to reveal the ridging or the protective layers. I'm covering some of it with black ink, others with some of the browns. That, for example, is the rusty hinge, but I'm not overly keen on that one. This one's the espresso, which is closer to the black in look. I couldn't find my vintage photo. But the idea is to create a variety of these cardboard backgrounds. You could use different acrylic paints to brush over these backgrounds and actually end up with something that isn't so grungy. If you pale, use some pale pinks and pale blues and some whites and then used fussy cuts of flowers, you would still have something recycled, but not in this sort of industrial steampunky grunge look that I'm going for here. I'm so sorry that this tutorial has taken so long to get to this stage. However, I think you can tell by the various sleeves that appear in the video that it was filmed over several days. So at the moment, what I'm looking for to make my clusters is different pages that we've already made earlier in the tutorial and scraps so that we can start layering and creating something interesting to look at. You can see that I'm choosing to have torn edges and even emphasise those tears using vintage photo distress ink. However, you can cut straight edges if that is the look you prefer. The photo I have wouldn't actually fit onto this cluster. So what I've decided to do is cut round the figure here you can just see me experimenting with what might make for an interesting cluster given the backgrounds and also the photograph. And I end up choosing one of the pieces of stamped Amazon wrapping paper that we did towards the end on that big envelope bag. What I didn't film and I'm showing you at this stage is that after gluing everything down using my matte medium, I then sewed around the edge on the sewing machine with a zigzag stitch. I'm no sewer, so I can't sew straight lines or particularly well, which is why I tend to leave sewing detail to things that are more grungy. And here I'm still adding detail to the grunge by now inking around the edge of the whole cluster. I am, because it's a stash building challenge, making different size clusters, using different backgrounds, 
tearing things down when I need to. And while I am using a limited colour palette, I'm not restricting myself purely to shades of browns and the black and white photos. I do introduce some colours, just a limited amount per cluster. With the kitchen grease proof paper or parchment paper, it is waxed. Therefore, it will not glue down using the normal mediums. I have used an all-purpose Uhu glue. Some of you use Fabri-Tac to overcome that issue. And for this particular cluster, I'm using one of my magazine cutouts, which is Tim Holtz style, Paper Doll. I'm leaving a lot of the design ideas in here just so you can see the variety that you can create from scrap pieces. This is actually a piece of the pre-printed envelope from Amazon. I think in the UK we get bits that are also in Spanish, French, German and therefore I've used one of the foreign language pieces. And now I'm adding the barcode that I stamped on top of as well behind that bit of coffee stain doily. This photograph was cut from a second-hand book. I would say a good source of these photographs are 20th century history books when they are illustrative. To make this cluster look different to the others, I'm actually going to use some of the printed paper as the first layer by adding what we've done so far to it and it's made quite a large page decoration. I'm sure by now you're beginning to get the idea of how I put the clusters together. I'm taking contrasting pieces of tear off and layering them on top of each other. Casual collage style, I suppose you could call it. Generally, I'm using the photographs as the focal points. Sometimes I'm inking the photographs up around the edges. Other times I'm not. Trying to make each cluster a little bit different to the previous one. I thought it might be nice for you to see a more colourful interpretation that still has that grungy effect. So I'm using a bit of this ticket paper that actually is one of my ink stamps just onto a blue background. And now I'm just looking for what might go with that. And I found this book illustration. Therefore, I'm going to try and get a few more neutrally colours in and see how that works as a collage. As you can see, once I'm happy with my choices, I get them glued down pretty quickly so that the decision making process is taken away. I sometimes think, particularly when you first start out with junk journaling, you spend too long making decisions on placements when in fact, when things are layered, almost any piece or picture will work with another piece. Because the coffee staining of the plain packaging didn't really work, I'm just going back in with some vintage photo and highlighting those creases before using it as part of a cluster. Having chosen the photo, just to make it again different to previous clusters, I'm trimming off the white border and then edging it with black ink to make it even more dramatic. So now you're just witnessing variations on a theme. Different textured papers on top of each other and framed focal points, whether it's been framed by a photo frame, inking or a white edge. Here we are with all the results of everything I've done. As you can see, I've added stitch work, whether it's zigzag or a plain stitch to all the different clusters that are here. Some have some colour to them, some are more grungy style. I think you can tell from this short walkthrough the different papers that have been used and that I've tried to make each one look slightly different to the previous one while still being of a Tim Holtz grunge style. I don't know what else you would call it. If you haven't seen the previous tutorial, those frames are available as a free download on that tutorial. Next time we'll be using these clusters to decorate journal pages and other bits and pieces that can go into journals to make them more interesting. And I am hoping to make that tutorial a little shorter for you. 
I will see you very, very soon.